Let us remain standing just a moment for prayer. Dear God, we thank Thee tonight for first for Jesus Christ, our Savior. We thank Thee because that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank Thee for people who believe that. We're so glad that we have a God, not just an imaginary God, an imaginary idol, an imaginary spirit. There's nothing imaginary about it. A true and living God who lives with us and in us and works through us. Not making a statue to God, but we being living images of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit not speaking through a statue, but st speaking through a redeemed vessel. God manifested in flesh. How we thank Thee for this. The great pillar of fire following us, or are we following it, brethren? And for all the great manifestations of the same Spirit doing the same work that it's always done when it comes to the earth. What a consolation it gives us. We have assembled tonight, Lord, for no other purpose but to know how and to learn how, by Thy help, to be better Christians and better fit subjects for this hour that we're approaching. Won't You help us, Lord? We need You. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me be seated. With about another 30 or 40 questions, I, I don't know how I'd ever get to them. I tried hard this afternoon to see if I could even get them down to normal, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> but I want to say that I'm going to do the very best that I can to, to answer these questions because they're fine questions coming from the hearts of Christians. And I, I certainly want to do everything that I know how to answer them just as sensibly as I know how to answer them. And I, I want to thank the Lord for how His help this morning in helping us to, to get a hold of these questions and, to, and to, the answers that He did give us. Now, I've just got them all in here mixed up, I guess, 150 more. And we got to about 20, I guess, this morning. And, um, and so now, before we start, I would just like to say that if anybody wanted to see this article on um, a church rocks as the drums roll, the Presbyterian minister here, um, are leading his congregation in rock and roll, a program uh, for, the, for the sacrament. Let me just see just a minute. Youthful members swing out to jazz, jazz passion, play tales of the crucifixion in modern I-D-I-O-M, rock and roll. <laughs> the pastor here leading all the teenagers up there and going through the passions of Christ, the crucifixion, played out in rock and roll and jazz. Well, it's in Maryland. Now, isn't that something? And then here is a picture of those, uh, I was telling you this morning, of those beetles. The return of beetles. And there's the Articles, you just should read it out of the magazine and all of the different things as it were had founded a new religion. Now, their manager, I've got a note out of the paper here. You haven't got time. If anybody wants to read these, or I can put them on the bulletin board, then you can read them. And I just want to show you the hour that we're living in. It's shocking. You might not understand it, but people try to understand it, that what these things are. I've asked Brother Caps, he's got a good education and can read better than I, I've asked him to read this article from the manager of the Beatles. Can you do it, Brother Caps, this time? States that the Beatles wonder about themselves and draw no answers. It's incredible, absolutely incredible, says Derek Taylor, the Beatles press officer. Here are these four boys from Liverpool. They're rude, they're profane, they're vulgar, and they've taken over the world, it's as if they'd founded a new religion. They're completely anti-Christ. I mean, I'm anti-Christ as well, but they're so anti-Christ they shock me, which isn't an easy thing. But I'm obsessed with them. Isn't everybody? I'm obsessed with their honesty, and the people who like them most are the people who should be outraged most. In Australia, for example, each time we'd arrive at an airport, 
It was as if de Gaulle had landed, or better yet, the Messiah. The roots were lined solid. Cripples threw away their sticks. Sick people rushed up to the car as if a touch from one of the boys would make them well again. Old women stood watching with their grandchildren as we'd pass by. I could see the look on their faces. It was as if some Savior had arrived and all these people were happy and relieved, as if things somehow were going to be better now. Taylor paused and stuck a cigarette in his mouth. The only thing left for the Beatles, he said, is to go on a healing tour. Isn't that what he said? Many shall come to me in that day and say, Lord, have not I... See? Now, can't you see that you can't push your trust in healing campaigns? You can't put your trust in any kind of a sign like that. The only thing you can put your trust in is, Thus saith the Lord from the Bible. Now, church, that is exactly where I have tried to keep you, my children. And if something happens to me, and God takes me out of this earth, don't you never fail. Remember this with all your heart. Stay with that word. Don't you leave that word. Anything contrary to it, leave it alone. No matter what it is, then you know it's right. A healing campaign now. Sinful man that even shocked their own managers with their vulgar and dirt and filth. And people throw away their crutches and get healed by looking at these boys. It's so filthy and dirty and antichrist. You see, it's Satan on a mock campaign. See, he does anything that the Christ can do, but he can't confirm the word. He'll take part of it here and part of it here, but he can't take it all together. See, he can't get it together. So you see, no wonder the Bible said that it would almost fool the very elected if it was possible. The Antichrist spirit. Now, even their own press manager here, press agent, he's for them, believes in them, and said he's possessed of the same thing because they've won him over. Them evil things. And now, don't you see, women, why I am trying to tell you about this short wearing, hair cutting, bobbing, and things? It's a spirit. It is a spirit. Here it is right in our leading magazines and everything of what's showing out rock and roll and stuff in the church. Why, it's a setup exactly for Satan. And there's still churches and denominations. Back to the word, children, as fast as you can go. Don't you dare to leave it. You stay right with that word. See how that antichrist spirit, it can speak in tongues, it can show signs and wonders, it can heal the sick, it can do all these things. See, them people thinking they're approaching God. Them boys are God sent because the church has let down on the Word. Those boys belong to church. Elvis Presley is a Pentecostal. Pat Boone is a church of Christ. Look at them guys. Pentecostals, church of Christ and all those like that with them evil spirits on them. Red Foley, a golden voice. Church of Christ, sing the religious songs like nobody can sing them and rock and roll in the next voice. By their fruits you know them. Look what churches they belong to. Elvis Presley and members of the Assemblies of God. There you are. Each one of them wanted that and Satan give it to them. Don't you see, uh, friends, how don't let loose of that word. See, it's a spirit that gets on you. Now I tell these women when they make themselves look sexy in these dresses that God's going to make you answer for committing adultery? If you believe me to be what you say, God's servant, a prophet, listen to what I'm telling you. See, you might not be able to understand it, and if you can't, then you just do what I tell you to do. God will hold me responsible for what I say. See, you listen real close and remember that those things are spirit. Ordinarily, maybe the person don't... You remember God covered with skin I preached on not long ago? See? See? God with skin on it? Now, just remember, some of us are sent to this world to break into these rims to tell us these things. See? 
It's the foreknowledge. It's God speaking, showing when you judge anything by the flesh. Why, they're innocent. Look here. Fine people, honest, wouldn't tell you a lie or nothing. And the whole thing is the devil. Religious. Even starting a healing campaign. See? Uh, just exactly Antichrist. And that's Presbyterian and all that. You see them denominations, how they do, right in the same thing. Well, here in London, England, just recently, they had a rock and roll team to impersonate Christ and Judas and all that. And uh, they called Christ Daddy-O and talked to all those cri- uh, words them crazy kids talk. See, the teenage kids talk over the world. Now, you know that the Bible predicts that? Amen. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, truce breakers, false accusers. Disobedient to parents. Teenage taking over the world. And it's done it. I went into a place the other day. I was playing this one of these old dirty jukeboxes, all that stuff. I didn't even want to take my family. I said to that lady, how much does them records cost? Ten cents a piece. How many will it play an hour? She told me. I said, here's the money. Unplug it. Well, she said, I couldn't do that. Them kids come in here to play that. Then I couldn't spend no money there. I went somewhere else. See? Well, that stuff that make you nervous, you'd have to uh, go down and get a bunch of tranquilizers to say <laughs> after you're hearing the crazy stuff. Yeah, man. That just irks a Christian. If you like that kind of stuff, you know what's wrong with you? You need to get saved. Because what's in you is feeding on something besides the Word. It's feeding on... You couldn't imagine Jesus doing a thing like that, could you? Could you imagine one of the prophets doing such a thing? Don't you see, fans, the whole thing all over is the devil. And the Bible said how he would come in form of religion and just do just exactly like the Christ. See? But the only way you'll ever be able to tell is not join this church or join that church is stay with the Word. He is the Word. Now, the Lord bless you each. We're going right straight to the questions. And now for about, to about an hour and 15 minutes, I'll not be able to get through all these questions. They're just piles of them. I think they're good questions. They're very fine. I'll just reach down, pick out one here and there as I go along. And now, answer it. I would. I thought tonight, i just come down, let somebody read them, say yes or no. Yes or no on that isn't doing the people just. They ask those questions to have them answered. And I, I wouldn't do that because I'll get what I can. What I can't, I'll get the next time around. And now, I, I, about next Sunday, I don't know. I tell you, if you get a hold of Billy sometime between now and Wednesday, we may have to leave. Now, here's one thing. I'm way behind in the interviews. Billy showed me a pile of interviews that high. It's been waiting some of them for months. Well, while I'm in, I've got to catch some of those, catch some of the meeting, do everything I can to kind of balance it up. I'm going to pray this week while I'm gone and ask the Lord, what would He have me do? Finish up these or, or take the interviews. If I take the interviews, then I'll just... Run, come home on Sunday and run the interviews right through somewhere and go right on through the day with interviews. And if I don't, well, I'll have to put the interviews off till I'm back again. If I don't, then I'll answer. I'll, Billy will send you a card. And I'll tell you, it's nice, these uh, dear kids, to tell you how they like one another. The love they have for one another. One will tell the other and the other will tell the Billy just calls one in a section of about 150 miles. And the rest of them gets to hold the rest of them. <laughs> they love one another. They don't want to miss anything. They want to be here at every minute to see what goes on. For if the Lord should give something, they want to be here to receive it. Amen. I appreciate them. I remember, dear friends, this morning I made a statement on some of the questions, and I noticed some of these I yet got in this morning is more about people moving out to Arizona. See? I thought I would better make that clear so that you'd understand. Now, don't, don't think that I'm trying to tell people that where they can live and what they can do. And I, I, I'm not saying that, my dear brother. There's honest people that wants to move out there or well, anybody wants to move. I'd sure be, be glad as long as I'm there, which as much as I'm there, I'm here about ten times what I am there. I've got between now and Christmas, I've got about four days to be there. Then immediately after that, I'll leave for overseas. I'll be here at the tabernacle maybe two or three weeks before I go overseas in a, a revival as I usually do this spring. And then from there, I've only got one meeting in all Arizona, and that comes off in January at Phoenix two nights with a Christian businessman. The, I don't, if the people out there, um, 
Could you flip that tape? <clears throat> now, as we're starting in on these uh, questions tonight, I'll pick up one here. And are you enjoying them? Say amen. amen. I think it's profitable for us at this time. No, I believe shortly at looking uh, this morning before coming down here at some some texts and some places in the Bible, I thought, oh, what a wonderful thing it would be while we're waiting for the coming of the Lord. What a wonderful thing it would be to take back through all those Old Testament characters through Job and through there and run series of meetings on them. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah. Just to show how they type right into the day the whole word ties together and all about the destructions of the, and the ancient times and how they uh, type up with the day. How everything in the Old Testament speaks of the coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, first question I pulled out of here. Brother Branham, is it wrong for a Christian to put, to put her hair in pin curls? Also, what length should her sleeves be? Thank you, a sister. Um, now, that means a whole lot to that woman. Now, to some of us brothers, we might think, oh, this silly woman. But well, it's not silly to her. She wants to know. Now, about putting hair in, uh, what was it? Pigtails or something or another. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I didn't, I, I, I'm sorry. Pin curls, excuse me, pin, pigtails. That's what the girls used to wear years ago. You remember, kind of, wasn't that right? They call them pigtails, just kind of curls hang down. No, pin curls, excuse me, friends. Um, uh, what length sleeves should she wear? I, I don't think that it is anything about that. I don't know. See, what I can't back up to the Bible, I, I don't want to say much about it. Now, I'm just telling you this for me because I have no Scripture to back this up. The only thing I have for the ladies about their hair is not to cut it. How they want to wear it, that's up to them. And about the pin curls, actually, I don't know what they are. Unless it's these things look like clothespins that they stick in their hair.